Welcome to Forensic Friday, where I tell you one true crime case that was solved using forensic science all while doing, and that's right, my makeup. Today's video will be featuring the Limoncello palette from ColourPop. I don't know why I just said it like that, Limoncello. <laughs> All the other items I'm using in this video will be linked in the description below. I'm having a day, okay? <laughs> so if you see some sort of random outburst of me screaming like a wild banshee and running around pulling out my hair and just abruptly crying, then just ignore it and pretend like it's part of the program. Detective Inspector Lucy, okay, now known as Detective Inspector Lucifer isn't really feeling well either. She swallowed opious amounts of string. She actually chewed my shirt, which had like some strappy strings that wrapped around the body. Well, yeah, she chewed them off. Um, it was a lot of string. I'm a little worried about her. She seems to be acting normal. That's not what you guys are here for. You guys are here for the makeup and the true crime. So that is what we're gonna get into right now. I just wanna say really quickly, I'm in no way, shape or form a professional makeup artist, beauty guru, MUA, forensic pathologist, criminal law student, nothing, 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 girl, I ain't shit, okay? <laughs> I'm just the average girl at home like you planning makeup and talking about true crime. So if you love true crime and makeup, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future episodes. And let's get into today's case. Elise Medecki was an air traffic controller for one of the largest naval jet bases in the world. After a long day of work, she and her husband decided to go out to dinner. They went to this Italian restaurant in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Italiano! Her husband, Eddie Medesi, worked in the computer business. He did a lot of contract work and some of it was for the U.S. Navy. That's actually how he and Elise Medesi met. Sometime after 9 p.m., the couple returned home from dinner. Now, when they got home from dinner, someone was waiting for them. Eddie claims that when he regained consciousness, his hands were bound behind his back. He saw his wife tied to the bed and what he claimed was a man raping and stabbing his wife. Now, somehow, Eddie managed to free his hands and grab the can gun that he kept in his nightstand and shot the intruder. Then he called 911. He claimed when he called 911 that, you know, he had found someone in his house that was raping his wife and he shot them and, you know, the cops needed to come quickly. But the intruder wasn't dead yet. According to Eddie, he rose up and headed towards him with the knife and Eddie shot him two more additional times. Oh my God, I love this foundation. Ooh, girl, yes she is naturally beautiful. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline, except it's not Maybelline. It's actually Cover Girl foundation. So. When paramedics arrived, Elise was barely alive. When police arrived, they found her with her skirt pulled up, um, her pantyhose had been ripped. She had multiple stab wounds in her chest and her throat had been slit from ear to ear. So this entire time, according to paramedics, Elise was trying to talk, like they really believed she was trying to communicate, but Elise could never get the words out. Before anyone could understand her, like what she was trying to say, she died on her way to the hospital. I'm trying not to put on too much makeup today, you guys, but whatever. So police found the assailant's driver's license. They identified him as 37-year-old Quincy Brown. Now, he was positioned laying backwards with his legs underneath his back, and he had three gunshot wounds to his chest. Now, Quincy Brown was a co-worker of Elise. They worked at the same naval air base. Immediately, police knew that it wasn't just some random crime, like, Something happened to bring these two co-workers together. Elisa's husband was treated for his head injury and then released, so he wasn't too bad. Now, as crazy as Eddie's story sounded, the evidence seemed to support everything that he said. 
The entrance floor was littered with takeaway containers, you know. There was electrical cords used to tie Eddie's hands and they were on the floor near the, um, the perpetrator's body. Underneath the intruder's right hand was a knife. And not only that, you guys, Eddie gave police a videotape that Elise had made right before her death. This videotape contained some really shocking uh, evidence against her superiors. She claimed she had been sexually assaulted by her superiors in the Navy. There were allegations that the Navy definitely would not want to go public. Lucy. <laughs> okay. Police found that Elise and Eddie had only been married for five years at the time of her murder. They lived in an apartment together off the military base and they had no children. Friends and family say Elise loved her job as an air traffic controller. Now Quincy Brown, the man that was found shot in um, their bedroom on the floor, the perpetrator, um, he had no prior history of any violence or anything like that. He had been in the Navy for over 19 years and he was married. He always is, aren't they? Always is. He had a child. He didn't have any criminal background. Quincy Brown worked with Elise at the Naval Air Base. Everyone that knew Quincy said that this was not like him. It's that he would never do something like this. Although, like, lots of, plenty of times, you know, you think that your friend would never do something like that, and then you find out later that they did, and you like, ooh, I gotta turn your ass in. Because I didn't even know you was capable of something like that. But, I mean, when do you ever believe? Like, I don't think I would ever believe most people are capable of doing something like that until they did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Police did perform a rape kit on Elise, and they found that she had, in fact, um, had sexual intercourse. And that DNA did match Quincy Brown, so uh, yeah. And the knife that was used to stab Elise was found under Brown's hand. But what police couldn't figure out was what led Brown to murder Elise. What's she doing in the kitchen? Oh my God, I'm gonna have to go make her food. She's opening the damn cabinets. Now, this is when Eddie Medesi chimes in and he claims he knows why that Brown would want to murder his wife. He said that his wife had made this videotape right before her death and he showed the tape to the police. He believed that this was the reason why Brown killed Elise. And oh my god, you guys, I wish I could show this video on here, but I think that I would get like copyright striked or something. I don't want to get any strikes, but I wish I could show you guys this video. It's really horrific to watch, like to be honest with you, to see how, you know, her demeanor is and how shaken up and upset she is. And it's just like, it really is like, I felt a little traumatized watching it. Now in the video, Elise describes, like I said, it was horrific. She describes like horrific details of what happens to her. And she pretty much accuses like the, some of the most highest ranking officers in the Navy of committing these crimes. She was claiming that the higher ups were covering it up. It was like a diary of sorts of every single um, sexual assault and rape that had happened to her. So she also claims in her video that she made a list of names of the people who had committed these acts, these horrendous acts on her, and she put it in a safe deposit box um, in her own name so no one can get, get into the safe deposit box. Police had to use a court order to get into that lockbox and get Elise's journal. And sure enough, on that list was Quincy Brown's name. He was listed as one of the attackers. Elise listed all five men she claimed raped her while on duty. Police now had to get NCIS involved. Police questioned all four of the other men that Elise named on her list. And all five men denied the allegations. According to Elise's friends, most of the men that she had claimed on this list 
um, that was her attackers were very decent family men, like they were higher ranking class. So police asked Elise's supervisor and friend um, if she had heard anything, if Elise had ever mentioned to her that about this attack or these attacks from these men. And her supervisor says right away she just knew it was a load of crap because Elise had never ever mentioned that to her before either to her or to another commanding officer who also worked there before and they were all pretty close they talked almost all the time and it was just something she would have told them i don't know you know to be honest with you you never know uh, a lot of people go through things and they keep it quiet and they never tell because it's such a horrific thing so you know, you can't really tell if it actually truly happened based off of the fact that she didn't say anything, if it's a real, if it was legitimate or not. This happens to a lot of women often where um, they'll be attacked and they won't say anything or they will hide it because of many reasons. Shame, fear, um, you know, just embarrassment. Oh, there's a lot of reasons why women in that position would do something like that, would hide something like that. So I don't want to say that based on the fact that she never said anything, that that means it's a load of crap. I think that the commanding officer saying that is kind of like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like she, she should say that. Although, maybe she had a point, I don't know. Now, Elisa's husband, Eddie Modeski, was really, really fired up and honestly pissed about this. He was adamant that Quincy Brown had went there to shut his wife up and that is why the whole thing occurred. We heard this theory that it was possibly uh, made up that she had been assaulted. He was really livid and I can understand even if it, as, it, as her husband, I would be livid too. Like, uh, why would you think, some? why would somebody make that up? Eddie was also telling police that Quincy Brown was part of some higher conspiracy that had uh, higher Navy force commanding officers involved. And as proof, Eddie pointed out to police that Elise had been recently demoted from her position at the Air Force Base. Eddie said it was in retaliation for Elise's sexual harassment claims against these officers in the Navy base. <sighs> you guys, this is like... This is too much. I'm starting to think like, who's telling the truth? Who's lying here? Now it's time to go into the palette. But anyway, back to the story. Eddie said they slowed down her training and reassigned her to a different department because of that. Eddie also said it wasn't just her attackers. It was also the superiors that she had confided in that was working against her as well that was trying to shut her up. Like everybody, he's saying like everybody was pretty much trying to shut her up. I could see that happening honestly, but police found a few inconsistencies in Eddie's story. According to Quincy Brown's cell phone records, police say he called the Modeski's apartment around 9.36 which was after the time Eddie had claimed they were assaulted at their front door. Now this call lasted around two minutes and 10 seconds and police just felt like that it was highly unlikely that someone was gonna call and, you know, talk to them and then come over shortly after to murder them. Like, hey, are you home? Yeah, I just wanted to see if I could stop by and rape and murder you. Like. No one's gonna do that. So police just thought that like this was, this was highly unlikely. Now the knife found under Quincy Brown's hands that he would have used to kill Elise didn't even have his fingerprints on it. And the blood that was found on Quincy Brown's shirt was not Elise's, but his own. So police are trying to figure out how in the heck did he stab Elise in the chest that many times, slit her throat from ear to ear, and get zero of her blood on him? Like that, that's pretty impossible. Police also found that Elise had purchased the gun used to kill Quincy Brown that night in a sporting goods store in Virginia. So then investigators started to suspect that, okay, something's not right. And they started to look elsewhere, like who would want 
Quincy Brown and Elise dead. Like, who would have a motive? They started to suspect it was a setup. Also on Elise's tape, she had threatened to go public with all of the information that she had. There could be a lot of people out there who didn't want that kind of information out. Ooh, she cute. The only problem is the Navy denied that Elise ever signed even one of those claims. Like she never even put in a single claim about her assaults. And again, like I said, I don't want to be judgmental. A lot of women, a lot of times, don't report it because of their fear of not being believed or whatever. But it's just strange that Elise had made this videotape, sent it to the Navy, and then threatening to expose them soon, and but didn't put in one single complaint. I mean, if you were experiencing that, you should definitely put in a complaint and keep a record of your complaints so that if it continues to happen and you do come forward, you do have a record of it. I kind of want to wet the brush, but then I'm like, girl, no. You didn't know anything about wetting the brush. You always fuck up when you wet the brush. You just want to do it because you've seen other YouTubers do it, but you don't know what you're doing. Something was just not adding up about Eddie's story. He had claimed that Quincy Brown came into the apartment and knocked him unconscious before raping and killing Elise. But it just, everything wasn't adding up. The timing wasn't adding up. A lot of stuff was not adding up. So investigators went back to the one place they knew would have the answer, the crime scene. They were hoping that the crime scene would tell them something that they weren't able to actually see. So police brought in one of Virginia's best crime scene experts to analyze. And they found a lot of evidence that did support Eddie's version of the story. But then the crime scene analyst found something else. They looked more closely at the crime scene photos and noticed that they contradicted Eddie's story. The autopsy report showed that the first shot penetrated Quincy's heart. This creates arterial spurts, high pressure injections of blood from the body, and they are easily identified. Because the blood was ejected on a stream, it broke up into larger masses. Eddie had originally said that when he was being attacked, he ran to the nightstand to grab the gun and shot Quincy Brown as he rushed towards him. Now, even though Eddie had said that he shot him that way, the crime scene photo and the blood splatter evidence showed that Quincy had actually been facing the opposite direction. The blood splatter evidence showed that Quincy was not standing at all, that he was in a kneeling position at the time of the first shot, and that his physical position never altered other than to just, you know, fall back. Zahara, what are you doing? Investigators now had a theory that Eddie Cadessa was involved in an elaborate scheme. First, he convinced his wife to make the videotape and the written journals, accusing the five men of rape and sexual assault. Their plan was to file a lawsuit against the Navy. And police found that Eddie had been going around telling a lot of people that this case, this sexual harassment case with his wife, was gonna be one of the biggest lawsuits against the Navy and he actually compared it to another really huge civil lawsuit that was going on at that time. But there was a twist. Police believe that Elise was a willing participant, that she was actually in partnership with Eddie on this entire thing. They planned to prove their case by luring one of the men that Elise had claimed assaulted her in her journal. So they lured Quincy Brown to their apartment to have unprotected sex, and they were planning to use that as DNA evidence. It's unclear whether Elise knew that Eddie was planning to kill Quincy, or if they were gonna just let him go once everything happened, but pretty much they, they told Quincy like, hey, 
let's you know come over to the apartment we can have like a threesome or you can you know to have sex with Elise while um, Eddie watched they just needed to do that so that they had DNA evidence to prove the rapes but um, police believe that Quincy did not force his way into that apartment at all that Quincy had probably called them shortly after they arrived home from dinner and then he came over and after everything was set up um, after Eddie had tied Elise to the bed and the whole scene was kind of staged and set up um, Eddie told Quincy you know go inside and you know have fun I'm just gonna watch I'm not gonna be involved in the threesome after Quincy had had unprotected sex with Elise that is when um, they kind of confronted him and was like you know you just broke in and shot and and raped my wife it's funny because investigators did find a unopened condom in Quincy's uh, jacket pocket they're not quite sure why he didn't use it police believe Eddie planned to kill Quincy after the sexual act was committed to like you know to silence him so they didn't have any witnesses or anything now elise and eddie had bought the gun in hampton virginia the night before um, the murder occurred but what police were questioning was why did eddie kill his wife investigators found that eddie medessa had taken out a five hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy on his wife a person with her title in the Navy don't make that much money. He had taken off this policy 30 days prior. That's not suspicious at all. No, not at all. This plus a $200,000 Navy life insurance policy for her was more than enough. It was a pretty significant payout. Ooh, I hate when my flesh starts acting up. Don't act up today. Police believe that Eddie was a cold-blooded killer who loved his money and was willing to sacrifice lives to live the good life, you know? They felt that he strategically thought out and planned this entire thing and this double-cross murder months ahead of time. This, this for him was the perfect opportunity as well because he could now pin his wife's murder on Quincy and he also had an excuse for the reason why you know he shot Quincy yeah this dude really put some thought and effort into what he did it's kind of sad though because Elise was also if you think about it even though she died she and she was murdered and wronged as well she also conspired with him to do all of this stuff so she pretty much conspired her own murder that's twisted the only thing that Elise did not take into account was that her husband was even more wicked than she was and he double crossed her. Based on the forensic evidence, police believe that Eddie Modesca was responsible for his wife's murder and Quincy Brown's murder. They believe that everything started as a sexual harassment lawsuit scam against the Navy. Eddie Modesti almost got away with the perfect double murder, but he left too many clues behind for forensic scientists. But police had just one problem. When it came time to arrest Eddie Modesta, he had fled to Russia and he was now a Russian citizen. And police did not have an extradition treaty, so they couldn't get him out of Russia. For almost 10 years, Eddie Modesky was on the run, but I give you another twist. A news reporter actually decided to track him down even though police, authorities, everyone was telling him not to. Everyone was telling this reporter that it was completely useless, the state department was telling him it was useless, the police department, the embassy was telling him it was useless, that Eddie Modesca was never going to come back into the states, he was never going to come out of hiding. But this reporter took it upon himself to see for himself and he emailed Eddie Modesca and what do you know he actually replied back to the reporter's emails and agreed to meet with him so the reporter flies all the way to moscow russia to meet with eddie modeska i just want to say props to that reporter i i mean wow wow sometimes i feel like 
the reporters do more than the police. Is, is that a thing now? I don't know. And it was the perfect timing because at that time, Eddie Modesca really didn't like living in Russia. Eddie Modesca claims that the Russian government um, took his money, they abused him and beat him up, and they put him in prison because they actually thought that he was an American spy. So according to his own words, there he was in Russia without money, um, and in prison and with the government, the Russian government harassing him and so he really couldn't stand living in Russia anymore and needed to return back to the States. I mean, seriously, if this is not a story of karma, I don't know what is. This is definitely one of those karma is a bitch story. Like. Seriously, he didn't even have American documents to prove that he was an American. So he actually needed the help to come back to America because I'm guessing then he was living in the States illegally. And when all of this went down, he fled to his country, which was Russia. And then all of that shit went down in Russia. So he had to fly his ass back to the states but he didn't have the proper documentation to enter the states so the only way he could do that was to you know make some sort of deal with this reporter and with uh, the government here so he had to weigh out his options and he pretty much decided that coming back to the states was the best option for him and just going on trial because he felt like Elise's videotaped allegations was enough to keep him out of prison and that no jury would actually convict him based off of that videotape because, you know, obviously that would give enough of a reasonable doubt to go ahead and stop them from convicting him. In his own words, he says, I wanted to come back to the States. I chose to come back to the States and face trial because I knew that I was innocent and I would, after they saw this videotape, that I would get the acquittal. But he was wrong. 14 years after the double homicide, Modesky went on trial. Despite the videotaped allegations from Elise, the forensic evidence was overwhelming. Thanks to forensic science and some good police work, Eddie Modesky was sentenced to two consecutive life terms in prison. What do you guys think about this case and my makeup look? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you like videos like these, check out my last episode. I will leave it linked on the screen somewhere here or here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week with another Forensic Friday episode. Bye!